sweet The slow so rescue Oh how infinitely sweet This great love that has redeemed As one From the dust of the ground, God formed man and breathed into him the breath of life. When the Israelites were trapped with their backs to the sea, Moses stretched out his staff and the waters were parted. Samson struck down a thousand oppressors of Israel with the jawbone of a donkey. At the blast of trumpets and a war cry, Joshua watched the walls of Jericho crumble. With torches and empty jars, Gideon and 300 men defeated an army of 100,000. David chose five smooth stones from the stream, and with them, he struck down Goliath. 5,000 were fed with only five loaves and two fish. If God can use such small things to change the course of history, certainly he can use you. of the Hagman and Hagman Report. My name is Doug Hagman, founder and director of the Northeast Intelligence Network, found on the internet at homelandsecurityus.com. With me in studio tonight is my ill-dressed co-host, Joe Hagman. Folks, if you want to watch the program in addition to listen to it, but, uh, but before you give the Homeland Security US 1.tk out, I just want to let you know, Cuban, I just went there and it gave me an error message. Um, but I will post the link in the chat room. You just go to, if you go to Cuban, 
uh, uh, Christians United Broadcasting Network on YouTube. And right on his channel, on the right-hand side, you can see a list of shows, RPM, Watching for Truth, Lord, Cuban, Prophetic Days, and The Hagman Report. And click on The Hagman Report, and that will take you to the video also. There you go. But I'm not sure, you know, if the link's broken or what's going on, but I just went to go on there, and I saw that. So there you have it. Uh, that is Christians United Broadcasting oh, Network. Right. Oh, no, we got it. Okay. If you want to watch us, Homeland Security U.S., one, the number one, that's Homeland Security US, the number one, dot TK, that's for video. Uh, and of course, Homeland Security US dot com is where our home base is, and we want to thank Troy and uh, Christians United for uh, simulcast, or for, for the video portion of this program. Now, tonight, of course, this is a live broadcast, the 16th day of August 2012. We've got a lot of news to cover. I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, folks, for joining us tonight. I know that you do this, uh, you do it on purpose, you join us on purpose uh, to be informed, and that's what we intend to do for you this evening. Um, a yeah. lot, again, a lot of news. Now, we got a lot to get into. I hope everybody can go to uh, homelandsecurityus.com. I'll post a link in the chat room. The article is called Christianity and Gun Owners in the Crosshairs Chilling Tactic Exposed. Uh, we're going to get into that article. Um, and some other news. And please uh, comment on that article at CanadaFreePress.com. They are so gracious to put that article up as well. They've got international readership. They've got uh, uh, Judy McLeod and, and company. I'll tell you what, uh, I, you know, I thank God for them. They're a great organization. Comment on that at uh, CanadaFreePress.com. And, uh, and also, uh, last night, something that we talked about in the chat room, and I said we get to it, and we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight, is uh, what was going on with uh, Steve Quayle, uh, yes. he's being demonized in the media, but first, uh, we are going to go right to a call, um, and we talked to this gentleman off air, and he's got something that's weighing a little bit heavy on his heart, Yeah, uh, and, and you know what, we want to get to it, because we talked to him off air, and uh, you know, it, it, it sharing, knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah, and sharing, uh, you know thoughts and feelings and, and things like this are important, you That's know, because right. we're covering, trying to cover all angles, and this gentleman uh, has a, a different perspective on, on you know, something so, that so happened, so we'll put him on right now. Go ahead. Uh, all let's, right. Let's bring him on, and uh, it's an interesting take. Uh, so, right, so Doug, you're on there with the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hi. How you doing, Doug? Go ahead and... Uh, you were sharing with us part of the program what's what's been heavy on your heart. Go ahead and uh, uh, now you're on air, so go ahead and tell tell uh, tell us all what what you're feeling here. Well, I was listening to your program with Steve Quayle last, and I just blurted out from from nowhere to my wife that wouldn't it be a uh, something of a false flag if something happened to Obama's. Uh, opponents in the election before, you know, like a week, two weeks before. Wow. Something happened to Romney and Ryan. Would that, wouldn't that be something that he could institute a martial law thing? Well, uh, I think you can... Well, certainly he would be uh, uh, you know, how could the elections be held, you know? Right. Uh, it would put him normally. In prime position, obviously, to be the front runner. Um, uh, as far as martial law being declared, I don't think they would uh, declare martial law if something were to happen to Mitt Romney or Paul Ryan. But, uh, you know, if you look at it on the other side, like maybe if it was uh, some of his people that work under him, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, anybody, Secretary of State, you know, Janet Napolitano, anybody who who is a head level uh, underneath Obama, you know, that might you know trigger something to what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. I I had also heard uh, something to the effect that that he may in some way have a false assassination attempt on himself. It, that would uh, trigger some some sort of. Uh, I, I I'm not sure exactly how the martial law thing is, how they can institute that. But I know he's he's gone way above and beyond his his powers so far. So I was sure. really you know 
been kind of thinking about that, and I thought, well, I should tell someone. Well, I'm glad you did, and and Doug, I'll tell you, you know, anything is possible nowadays. I, in in my estimation, I, we all know we're in uncharted territory, or at least in modern times. You know, we haven't we haven't been here since the late 1700s, or the 1700s. Um, I, and really, really, I don't think we have ever been here uh, because things are, are so much different. Uh, more advanced as far as uh, our society and culture and technology. Yes. So that we have a, you know, we're dealing with whole separate type of uh, scenario than any time in history previous. Well, Doug, that's chagrin, I'm sure. Uh, Doug, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, impart? Well, okay. You know, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm just sitting out here in the middle of California with a small family, and, you know, I'm concerned about a lot of things in this area. And, you know, I'm I'm a gun owner in California. That puts a big target on you right there. Yes, it does. And, and just these things, and, you know, the Steve Quayle had a, had a special alert thing up about some, some guy. What was yours? The guy that uh, the police came and knocked on his door and <laughs> yeah, the hospital. Yep, that was that was us. That was that was Jason. I, I interviewed him. He was on our program, um, and yes, he he's a uh, Christian, a good guy, uh, normal man. I mean, in terms of you know, he's very articulate. He's as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, he's certainly sane or appears to be. And uh, I emailed that. I emailed that to all of my list on my email. Okay, I was alarmed by that. As well, you should be. It's just like you're reading something out of out of Matthew twenty four, Mark thirteen. Yes, I, know, yes. That you're being delivered up. Look, I've I've received I've received a lot of emails about this Matthew twenty four. Um, in, indeed, I think that we, we right now at this point, we are at a crossroads or we've actually crossed those crossroads and now we're into, into, if they can do that to a young man in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and by the way, and I think I mentioned this in the article, I received, uh, uh, five additional, uh, uh, five people contacted me in addition to him saying similar things I happened to them, so... And this, that's, that's very alarming. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, let me tell you, I, I was I approached that article, uh, and the name of the article is Christianity and Gun Owners in the Crosshairs, Chilling Tactic Exposed. I approached uh, Jason, uh, made him jump through a lot of hoops, and, and I approached it thinking, you know what, I'll bet you there's something here that I'm missing, something that this guy is, uh, Jason probably, you know, I, I don't want to say deserved it, but Jason was perhaps uh, did more. Uh, did more. There was some backstory that we weren't getting. But in the end, in the end, I could find nothing, and that disturbed me. You don't think he was a plant of some kind? No. You mean Jason, the 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 the, the young man? No, the friend from New York. Oh, I, I, I no, you know. Um, I'm going to reserve comment on that, just because it, there's. I'm just going to reserve comment on that. I, I, I have. I, I have to do that. Uh, Carter, is there anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? No, just God bless you guys, and uh, I really am glad that we have programs like yours to keep us alert. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, so God bless you too, and uh, God speed. Well, God bless you as well, and thank you so much for listening to the show. And, I'll and tell thank you, you for calling in. And glad sharing. we got uh, call callers like him, right? Yeah, or, yeah, listeners like yeah. Him. I, really, I mean, really appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I always love to hear other people and their, uh, you know, theories, especially if there's something we haven't covered. Yes, um, we're going to get off. Starting with uh, some news right now, we're going to start with you, Otto. Yeah, and get callers on hold, please. Just bear with us. Let us get through some news. We're going to get to you as as your calls come in. Christianity and gun owners in the crosshairs. Chilling tactic exposed. If you are an outspoken Christian in America, you need to be concerned. 
If you are an outspoken Christian in America who happens to be a gun owner, you need to be very concerned. And if you are a Christian gun owner who disagrees with the progressive anti-Christian agenda in America and have a platform to inform others, you better believe that you are under intense scrutiny. Sound like propaganda? Uh, it says read more about it. Yeah, and, and we'll continue. And, and believe me, uh, that article, uh, my, my cord is stuck. Wait a second here. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. You no, know, you know, that, that article, I, I have to tell you, uh, again, the, that article is a result of the investigation. The Hagman and Hagman report played a, a bit role in this uh, to the extent that um, uh, Jason, uh, the, the victim, if you will, in this in this situation was listening to the Hagman and Hagman report when he was uh, picked up, uh, detained by Sheriff's deputy, or by the Scranton Police Department on mental health issues. Now, in Pennsylvania, we've got Act 302. And Act 302 is, is an involuntary commitment, and it usually requires two people, the signature of two people. Uh, it didn't work out that way. Now, uh, I've, I've received emails all day about this. Folks, um, just go ahead and read the article. We're not going to get into into the nuts and bolts of it, except to say that if you are a Christian, you're a target. If you're a gun owner, you're a target. If you're on a blog talk radio or if you're professing uh, the news and yeah. Christianity, you're a huge target. And we're going to get into that, uh, how Steve Quayle is being yes. targeted, yes. being slandered, and uh, really... Um, what would you call it? A uh, wait, wait. This is a hit piece. Yes. And I'm going to tell you why we're talking about this. <laughs> we're, we're talking about this because people, um, I've, I've gotten emails saying, well, you, you say you're under attack. How are you under attack? Well, these are the methods uh, that are being used right now. Okay, listen to this. Um, this is posted on Godlike Productions. <clears throat> oh, this is this out of Kansas is, uh, City, actually, on right. Fox News that reported this when they didn't even have to report this. I'll post the article from ABC in the chat room, um, and it is entitled, let me uh, grab it here, Illinois Couple to Stand Trial After Kids Found Bound. Yes. That's uh, on ABC News. And on uh, Godlike Productions, it's an internet forum that um, it's you can show it's stories a forum on. that is a sewer. It's and a piece um, of sewage. The, these people, uh, a lot of the people, it seems the administrators and some of the people there have problems with, with Steve. They don't like him. But, you know, a lot of people do and stick up for him. Anonymous also. cowards are what they're called, you know, when they, and, and they're anonymous and they're cowards and it's a sewer. I'm going to read the headline the way they wrote it. Illinois couple to stand trial after kids found bound. Steve Quayle inspired crime. This happened about 30 minutes from where I live. This is what this poster is saying. On the radio, they said the parents were followers of Steve Quayle, who said to be prepared for demons to take over the world. Then it gets into the article. A judge ruled Tuesday that an Illinois man and his wife will stand trial in Kansas on child abuse charges after two of their children were found in a Walmart parking lot tied up, a practice the father's lawyer described as a religious belief in the family and a way to guard against demons. Lawrence Police Detective Randy Glidewell testified Tuesday that when he interviewed <laughs> Adolfo Gomez the day of the arrest, Gomez said he had been listening to an online preacher who was preaching the end of the world, preaching the end of the world, and that a darkness had come over the house in Illinois. And guess, and guess where, Mr. Quayle, guess what venue Mr. Quayle was preaching that? Ours. Ours. But the Hagman, Hagman Report. You look at the, what this guy says right here. He says that Steve Quayle was uh, preaching, uh, predicting the end of the world, and that a darkness had come over the house in Illinois. Uh, that was, I mean, nothing okay. was ever mentioned. Yeah, look, like, you've got, here's the bottom line on this, folks. And the reason we bring this up is uh, is because uh, I guess we need to we need to really pray and, and understand what's going on. Right, you've and, uh, got this. Go ahead. This is like saying uh, I, I, you know, aborted. Say I was pregnant and I wanted to have an abortion. That I, you know, aborted my own baby with a hanger because uh, Rachel. I was watch, Rachel, watching Rachel Maddow or something. You know what I mean? Uh, just it's completely. And I know there's better examples out there. This guy, the, the, the man who, okay, the, the, the crime was this. He was caught in the Walmart parking lot, three kids duct taped uh, because they were demon-possessed. 
the guy was crazy. The guy was nuts. Yeah. He goes to the preliminary hearing. He testifies at the preliminary hearing that the reason he did this, or one of the contributing factors was, that he was listening to Steve Quayle, basically, on the Hagman and Hagman report, uh, preaching about demons over Illinois, over his house in Illinois, or whatever. I listen to that this guy was under the influence of drugs and alcohol. He uh, said he had not done acid in over 30 days, but uh, apparently he was up for it. He had, did not sleep for nine minute. days. This man didn't sleep for And I want to thank the people in the chat room yesterday uh, for... for uh, Said, you know, letting me know that because I didn't know that uh, at first either. But he, you know, the guy didn't wasn't sleeping for nine days. He was obviously had a, a drug, possibly schizophrenic uh, problem, some kind bipolar, of bipolar. Who yeah. knows? But see, but see, but, but see they take this story and uh, something true that you know evil is controlling and taking control, being let loose upon the earth. We see it every day, okay? Um, because this man was crazy. And took it as you know, evil was coming for him in his house right at that moment. It was not Steve Quayle's fault. Uh, no, it's you know, not, any more than if it's, any more than Rush Limbaugh or Hannity's been being blamed for anything, right? Or, or like right. Uh, you know, the guy is nuts. Yeah, and to say to even, I mean, I want to know. Okay, th this guy obviously said he heard the story uh, from listening to Steve Quayle online. Okay. Um, why would he bring, that was his, when he told the cops, you know, after being caught, you know, I, I listened to a radio show, and they said, well, who's the radio, or, no. you know, who showed you this? I mean, why was his name brought up and, and used in this fashion? Usually, even if that was the case, and it was true that he did listen to Steve's show, you know, while on drugs and up nine days or whatever and freaked out, they wouldn't even mention that. No. No, and people, look, the reason we're talking about this, we're, the reason we're giving this any airtime whatsoever is this. Number one, Steve Quayle is a good friend of this program, of mine, personally and professionally. Number two, Steve Quayle, as far as I am concerned, and I will argue this point uh, to the death, is a good friend of mine. He's a man of God, and he certainly uh, does not deserve his name to be dragged through the mud. Number three, the forums, the internet forums, these little, little monsters that live in the basements of their mother's homes that comment on Steve Quayle, our show, other shows like this, uh, that, that don't have the guts to, 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 to come out of their mother's basement and stop playing with their action figures. And that's not even the problem. The, well, the, the people that write on the sewage pits like godlike productions that I wouldn't, I would not even have, if I had it on my computer screen, I'd have to wash my screen off if you've ever been there. Well, let me okay. tell you this. That, that angers me. Okay, it's not, so, I mean, the, the people, yes, but the thing is, is it's not just the people you on the internet. You can't that. No, but I, it's not just the people on the internet forums. It's people all over, the, you know, the, the country. And um, it, it, they're sitting here complaining about this, complaining about that person, but they're doing nothing to help. Uh, you know, bring the country together, nothing to help people. I mean, when you have a person like Steve, and every time Steve comes on, I mean, I'm not exaggerating, we get people asking us to thank him for, you know, ways, in all these different ways he's helped people. Every time, different people, all the time. Like, tell Steve, Steve thank you, I was able to pay my rent this month. Tell Steve thank you, uh, you know, I got, you know, whatever it was that uh, Steve sent. Um, he was a very generous, kind man. His only mission is to, to help other people uh, understand the word of the Lord, be saved, live properly. That's the message he promotes. And for people to come after him uh, so cheaply, and, and you're right, on Godlike Productions, uh, as I, far I, as the I personnel on here goes, if you as far as that, the personnel you, you on here goes, that there, one there, name again, I'm gonna there smack are a few good people on here. But uh, for the most part, like you said, it's just, you know, uh, a bunch of... When you get, when you get, when you get some... The only positive of it is, there is a lot of breaking news that you'll get there first before I don't else, care. But that doesn't just, I mean, that doesn't make up for I know, what we see you, here. You get a guy that writes or, 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 or some scum... Yeah. You get somebody that wrote writing, I hope the man gets hit by a bus with Jesus driving. Yeah. Okay, that's that is absolutely uncalled okay, for. You tell me where that comes from. Yeah. Does that come from some Christian? Does that come from some normal person? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, and the and the the site Godlike Productions is anything uh, Godlike. Godlike. If anything, I refer to. Godlike. Uh, you know. 
But that's the last time we were, you were going to mention that on air. No, but and, uh, uh, we have to address how they're attacking Steve, and know it's going to happen, uh, you know, to us and to other people like us. Uh, Pastor Paul Begley, you know, we've seen him be attacked in the news before. The Huffington Post, I think, you know, uh, I've been a piece attacked on by him. the Huffington Post. We've, I mean, we've been look. It, 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 the bottom line is this: there's a war. It's a religious. It's a spiritual war, and you know how we have to deal with it with prayer. Okay, we really do, right? But but and with facts, and and not and look, we can't get hung up on on on, on these. No, but we had to address this. Yeah, uh, we had to address it because yeah. you know people uh, need to understand that um, little things like this, you know, add up. The average person uh, who just pays attention to the news, you know, once in a while or while they're eating dinner or whatever. If they were to hear the mention, you know, somebody listening to Steve Crow tied their kid, to, and those people don't do any, you know, further research or don't care about anything. And if they ever did come around, uh, they hear the name Steve Crow, they run. It, it's uh, um, slanderous. It, it's okay. defamation. Well, and even more so, this is the this is a method. Again, just like the individual in Scranton, Pennsylvania, just like Jason in Scranton, where they came for him because. They're treating Christianity as a mental illness. They're coming for yeah. broadcasters like Steve Quayle, like the Hagman and Hagman Report, like Pastor Paul Begley, like the RPM. They're coming for the people who are making a difference. They are attempting to infuse or attempting to counter uh, the, uh, the information we provide, and Alex Jones too, Yeah. okay, with... with um, I mean, uh, they're just uh, using uh, all tricks. I, mean, I, I can't even infiltra talk. Infiltration uh, through like the chat rooms and the and the comment sections. They they we read reports where they want to infiltrate uh, alternative news groups and and forums. They want to they've hired people to overload comments on articles to make it seem favorable towards one side or another. They have uh, just you've witnessed it even on our show. The people that uh, the the audio sabotage that happens sometimes. Absolutely. We have evidence right now that proves that there are more things going on at Blog Talk Radio um, than they, they can even explain. Uh, activities they can't even explain, which yeah. tells us everything we need to know. Um, but we just have to continue. We ask for your prayers. Uh, we, we will continue to pray. Uh, and, and, and we will continue and, and to I'm defend. That I, I, I feel angry. Uh, no, you, you yeah, should feel I, angry I'm, because it's a, a, a it's personal ridiculous. attack on a close friend uh, who does nothing but try to help people be saved. Let's see again and, the, the, the fairness doctrine. You got to think about that. You got to think about marginalizing the message for, of Steve because of because of idiots like this. The Fox News reporter who reported who dra the Fox News reporter had no reason. To bring in Steve's name, and uh, no. the, yeah, the ABC article didn't have Steve's name in it. The Fox News article did, right? And the Fox News article, I uh, just checked it. I'll check it again, but it took me. The link was down. Um, but, hopefully, but, but they they had no reason to do that except to, to marginalize the messenger and eradicate the message. That's what they are attempting to do. Now I got that. And here. now it is it is it is absolutely gearing up. Folks, we are gearing up for a one heck of a battle here, and this is what we're seeing. We're, we're starting to be silenced. Look what happened with GoDaddy, uh, yeah. with, with our site. We got to, we got forty dollars to, to told, we're told to hit the road. Okay, that's how the fight is going to be played. Okay, here we go. Or uh, is being played. I just um, posted the article from Fox News, the affiliate of Fox News. Uh, parents who duct tape children did so because they were demon possessed. They mentioned Steve Quayle towards the bottom of the article. Yeah, they said during conspiracy theorists. The preliminary hearing, the court also learned the couple was a regular listener of Steve Quayle, a conspiracy theorist who, according to his website, believes the world is coming to an end. And it, in the introduction in his 2003 book, Genetic Armageddon: Today's Technology, Tomorrow's Monsters, Quayle says it's safe to say that the most that the most those reading his book will live to see this terrifying future and may know the sorrow of seeing loved ones herded into death camps and of seeing mankind ground into powder under the metal and clawed feet of amoral supermen. The future will make the mass genocide of the 20th century pale in comparison. Now they call him a conspiracy theorist, but let's go right to Judge, okay? What do we see here? Uh, 
Pentagon developing robots to perform uh, evacuation operations. Is that that's the one uh, where they're creating the super humans, as we talked about last night. That's right. The uh, Auto uh, autonomous humanoid, humanoid robots, yeah. the DARPA, uh, and this is exactly they're calling him a conspiracy theorist, saying he's a kook for what he wrote in 2003, and that what he wrote is coming to fruition right on the mainstream media right yeah. now. That's right. So, again, this is a fight that we're up against, folks. And the only reason, again, the only reason that we said this is because it is a fight that we have to wage. We have to engage. Uh, we've got no other recourse except to let you know this is happening. And to give you an idea, too, I received a ton of emails about that, about Steve. And I, I really didn't want to address it because I didn't think it no. really, I really didn't want to because, it, to me, it didn't merit addressing I asked last but, night uh, if we, we should talk about it, and you said no, and I don't, no, I don't think you I, talked to Steve first either. So no, I, but, but it, there comes a point in time when, when you get so many people that you're writing you and saying, well, what do you think about this? You have to address it on the air. And the only reason I didn't want to address it is because some of these uh, these idiot, uh, uh, can, these forums with a bunch of uh, uh, trolls and diminutive, uh, uh, you know, people of impaired cognitive ability will... Yeah. Uh, who know nothing about anything will write things. And then, to make matters worse, the actual operatives uh, that are working for this administration will jump on the bandwagon. And that's why we, I want, you know, we wanted to address it tonight. So and hopefully we put that to bed. Especially for people who state that their truth is and their agenda is, you know, uh, no agenda behind, you know, the headlines stating the, the facts and the truth. To, to run with that and to kind of push that narrative is like uh, going along with, you know, the government story. I mean, it, it's a com it blows my mind. These people, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, it, it, it's like, it would be like saying all of a sudden, you know, them saying, oh, yeah, guns are the reason, you know, we got to ban guns now because it, it, it's just completely uh, moronic and they, they don't use their head. Like you said, there's a lack of cognitive uh, ability there. Yeah. And that comes from, you know, uh, the school system and, and the way society is set up. We're going to move on. Yeah, no, look, U U.S. government's yes. warrant that hits a record $5.29 trillion. Folks, understand this. I was talking to Billy Bear today, who's an attorney. He's uh, the, the other half of the Bear Haggerty Offensive. They have a radio show out of Philadelphia. I, sp I spent probably 45 minutes talking to Billy Bear today, and he said, you know, look, mathematically, there's no way we can get out of this debt, debt problem that we're in. And <clears throat> I, I, look, the, the government, U.S. government, owes to foreign entities now uh, $5.2923 trillion, and that's as of June. Now, uh, in May, we had owed uh, 5.28 uh, or 2581 trillion. So we're talking, what? What's a couple of billion among friends increase? Now, uh, in June, the U.S. government borrowed an additional $34.2 billion from foreign ent entities in order to fund U.S. government operations. Folks, do you understand what that means? We're borrowing money from other countries in order to sustain our government's budget. That'd be like you borrowing, uh, <laughs> to, to run your household, it'd be like you borrowing money from, uh, 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 boy, how do I even put that? Uh, somebody in China. Okay, or well, I guess maybe that that might not be a, that far off. But uh, look, our our interest uh, or our indebtedness to foreign interests has increased by seventy two percent. And this goes, and this article goes along That's with it. another one. Uh, Jim Rogers: The global economy is headed for a financial Armageddon, yes. and neither presidential candidate will get us out of this mess. No. In an interview with the Fiscal Times, Rogers, who thinks the global economy is headed for financial Armageddon and thinks America's debt problem is overwhelming, said people shouldn't expect the election to change much. As far as I'm concerned about the election, it is irrelevant. <coughs> one candidate happens to be from Boston and one from Chicago, and whoever wins, their friends are going to do well, but other than that, America is not going to do well. There's very little difference in any of these guys. None of them understand the problem. These are the guys that got us into this trouble. You expect them to get us out. And uh, the article goes on from there. Um, we can get more into that uh, as the show progresses. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, open the phone lines, get a number out, let people uh, get on hold here, and then we'll start taking some calls. The number is 661-244-9839. 
on this fantastic August 16th Thursday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. Already a half hour, uh, a quarter of the show down the drain, and less than a blink of an eye. Um, all right. Uh, the other thing we're going to get into tonight that's very important. I found this and I was, uh, I, I read this a couple times and it's uh, uh, amazing. You know, we see what's happening in the Arab, with the Arab Spring and Libya, Syria, Egypt. Uh, the way the U.S. military is, is spreading out and creating wars all over the, the globe. Well, now, America's shadow wars in Africa. Um, I'm going to slaughter this name. Peter Fellerhide, Fellerhide, shed light on the Pentagon's ongoing operations in Africa and the continent's growing strategic importance to U.S. interests. America's new and still evolving defense strategy is focused on Asia-Pacific, the next Middle East, as well as heralding a new, fray, a new phase of restraint in military spending. Over the next 10 years, the Pentagon faces budget cuts of $4.87 billion. I mean, that's nothing. No. Um, on the first visit to Japan as Pentagon chief in October 2011, U.S. Defense Secretary Panella stated that America would remain a global economic and military power despite the cuts and that the Asia-Pacific region would be central to the U.S. national security strategy. Washington's shift in focus towards Asia is a response to China's growing military power. And right. if you guys want to do some research, go look up um, um, Henry Kissinger, The Rise of China and the Fall of America. It's a, it's a paper uh, he wrote, or uh, an article he wrote, where he talks about how they are building up the East Asia or Asian markets. Uh, I, w I would also recommend Bill Gertz's uh, uh, book, The China Threat. Uh, Let me find the PDF here, too, because I have Bill Gertz has is, is, is done a lot on the China threat. Bill Gertz from the Washington Times, he's now with the Free Beacon or Washington Beacon, Washington Free Beacon. Bill Gertz, I, I've, he, he's quoted me a couple of times. I respect Bill Gertz as a journalist. I really do. He's one of the few uh, few journalists left that really get it. Um, now, one thing, as we're going through this, so I want to mention this. You know, he's talking about the, uh, we talked about the, the debt. He's talking about the shadow wars in Africa. Folks, you think anything is going to change? Let's just say nothing happens. Let's just say everything goes. Yeah, uh, direction. Like, yeah, like, like, you know, hey, everything is fine. Well, well guess what? You know, People who expect things to change under Romney, look, Obama and Romney both supported TARP. They both supported Obama's stimulus package. They they both bailed out the auto industry, right? Healthcare or they, Mitt Romney? Or, I'm sorry, no, Mitt Romney no, flip flopped on that. No, Rip, he he said that he was glad. He, uh, First he said no, then he said right. yes, or vice versa. And, and then he took credit for the idea, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, they both believe in big government, and they've got a track record as being big spenders. Obama and Romney are both on record saying that the president should not question the independence of the Federal Reserve. Go figure that. Yeah. Also, okay. uh, same ideals in, in, uh, on abortion, uh, yes. on gay marriage. Yes. And they both, by um, the way, speaking of the Federal Reserve, before I get off that, they both feel that Bernanke is doing a great job or a good job, has done a good job during the financial crisis. Both of them are saying this. They're both on record. And both of them uh, also support the NDAA. Yes. Proudly. And they, they both are big promoters of universal health care, and they both believe that U.S. Secretary of Treasury, Tim Geithner, has done a good job. Yeah. And they're know, globalists. It continues. They yeah. are, are globalists. They are Satanists. They are well, the destroyers. I, I, they are the ones that will carry out the the plan uh, from the Illuminati uh, to continue yes. the uh, destruction of the American economy, the American Constitution, America as uh, we once and <laughs> always knew it. And, and look, they're both uh, they both support these uh, job killing uh, free trade agenda, uh, the, the the job killing free trade agenda. That's really mm -hmm. the birth. That birth by the global elite, they uh, they both are extensively, extremely, significantly soft on illegal immigration. Uh, they both believe too in man-made warming, which global uh, warming, global warming, man-made yeah. warming. Yep, carbon taxes as well. And if you look at Romney's re uh, record when it comes to job creation, it's as bad as Obama's. And um, 
Uh, like uh, Barack Obama, also Romney promises or plans to add signing statements to bills when he signs them. So you think that there's going to be a difference? I just named off what ticked off about 20. Uh, uh, 20 uh, it's, re- it's refreshing to hear you say that because I, I think we were arguing a little well, bit about no, that. Well, no, but I, look, I, but I do think there's a distinct difference between Romney and Obama, specifically Obama. Uh, he, you know, he has... has Mm. Wow, the evil that surrounds Obama. But yes, uh, I mean, it, it's so easy to say we need to get Obama out of the office, but it's very difficult to say we have to put Mitt Romney in office because <laughs> Expl- I don't yeah, agree Expl- with yeah. Mitt yeah, Romney no, no, being no, no, president. No, no, no. I can't support that in good conscience. I, I, well, I, Vernon I, said it best. You, I, in good conscience, I can't support Obama, nor can I support Romney. But... In good conscience, I could vote for Romney because I know the evil that Obama will continue to do. That's but that's very true. I do know that Romney will continue it also. So, and, and you know, kind, kind of in a way, t- changing topics here. And I know we're jumping around a little bit, but I, I was just reminded when you were t- when you were saying that in my conversation with Billy Bear. Remember the movie The Fight Club, folks? I don't know if you ever watched that movie or not. Uh, my question to Billy Bear was, uh, why are people taking, why are Americans taking all of this, taking the, the, the taxation, taking the, the abuse at the airports? What's wrong? Why aren't Americans, Americans fighting back? And Billy Bear, God bless him. And, and again, you've got to watch or you've got to listen to the Bear and Haggerty offensive out of Philadelphia. But Billy, Billy said to me, he said, remember that movie in the Fight Club where uh, – they sent. They sent the. Uh, they would send a, a young man out to get in a fight. Yeah, so that, that, the fight. movie was about uh, a uh, group of people started at a club where right. you fight. But anyway, anyway, in one of the scenes, this this young man was tasked with going to engage someone, make someone fight you. Okay, and uh, I I I don't know how the I can't remember exactly how the scene went, but I guess he was trying to pick a fight with a priest or. The priest walked by, he squirted him with a hose. But he couldn't get, for the longest time, could not get the man to fight him or fight back. And he said, that's Americans today. That's what Americans are today. They're used to taking it and not sticking up for themselves. And I thought, you know, I remember the scene vaguely, but I thought, man, that's, to me, what, what 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 an interesting comparison and an analogy and i think that that is where we are at today so uh, well, i want to let before we get any further why don't we go to the phones oh, hold on uh, i just sent troy a video troy you whenever you get that queued up uh just let me know and we'll go ahead and play it right away this is what um i was talking about uh there is a video henry kissinger on the fall of the usa and the rise of china yeah, oh, that that by the way, I watched that video. What a tremendous video! What a, seriously, what a tremendous video! Uh, that would be the one, Troy. Uh, I believe that would yep. be the one. Yeah, so that's it. You've got it. But in the meantime, before, do you have that ready, um, Troy? Or okay, when we're ready, you, well, go ahead and play that. And folks on hold, please just hang on, just for a little bit longer. We'll take the call right after. And, okay. and how long is this? Uh, it's six minutes long. Okay, we're going to cut our audio so the full screen is on this video. Take a look. And, and folks that are uh, just listening to this program, take a listen to this. Stand by, people. I'll be posting a link in the chat room for you guys if you want to. You, you can see in the background our computers just just uh, working away there. Here we go. This is now, who better to turn to about the awkward dance between China and America than the man who first tried to choreograph it? Dr. Henry Kissinger famously went to China in secret in 1971. His mission was to woo a communist country reeling from famine and careering towards cultural revolution that could become a counterweight to Soviet Russia. As Secretary of State, he prepared the historic visit of his then boss, President Nixon. Well, tonight he's in Washington about to attend the state banquet at the White House before donning his black tie. He spoke to us. I began by asking him whether China's recent transformation into America's banker keeps him up at night. 
No, it doesn't keep me up at night. I didn't obviously expect it in 1971. Uh, but it's a reality with which we have to live. But is that a reality that America should be afraid of? No, it, um, America has to live uh, with the China that exists. And uh, whether we have to be afraid of it or not will depend on the policies we both pursue. And uh, it should be our objective to have it a, a uh, country with which we cooperate creatively. I mean, let's be honest, Dr. Kissinger, the last year has been pretty tricky, hasn't it? Issues of trade, of currency, of human rights. If you were in the White House today, what would you be advising President Obama to do? It seems to me that uh, uh, China and the United States have really n no, there's no victory conceivable in a Cold War between them for either side. And so I have the impression that the leaders that are assembled here today uh, are conscious of this. And while a lot of the media uh, discussion deals with alleged confrontations that are going on, uh, I believe the, some of these uh, differences are real, uh, but also there is a consciousness that they need to be overcome. Dr. Kissinger, the perception in China is that America is trying to limit its expansion. The perception in America is that China is becoming a dangerous rival. However reasonable these two leaders are in their discussions in the building behind you, isn't it a fact that domestic politics in both countries are now poisoning the brew? That is a, uh, that it's a danger, and I think it's the responsibility of the leaders on both sides to turn the discussion into a into a constructive di direction. If one asks oneself in Europe, if the leaders on the eve of World War I in 1914 had known what the world looked, would look like in 1920, would they have gone to war? Or would they have looked for another way of settling their differences? Now we know that the consequences of confrontation are going to be... Uh, uh, unfortunate for both sides. So they owe each other a serious effort to come to some constructive uh, conclusion, especially, as I, I said, neither country is capable of dominating the other, and neither country is going to win a Cold War type situation. But you are right, public opinion in both countries is unfortunately gaining in the other direction. So what's the worst-case scenario here? Well, the worst-case scenario is uh, that we would slowly drift into a situation comparable to some of the aspects of the Cold War in which relationships is uh, conceived as a zero-sum game. In that case, uh, the prospects of globalization uh, would be severely impaired. Uh, the Asian development would... Uh, uh, would suffer, and at the end of it, uh, we would not have advanced uh, many of the objectives in the name of which this is uh, allegedly conducted. There's been a lot of talk lately about America's relative decline and China's soaring. Let me give you one example in particular. In Afghanistan, there are tens of thousands of American troops trying to make that country more secure. But it's the Chinese and their companies who are going to benefit from the mineral wealth in Afghanistan, not America. Well, in the short term, uh, there's no dramatic change possible in this. In the medium term, it will be necessary to change the balance of responsibilities. And it cannot continue that the United States carries the major military burden and other countries uh, get the economic uh, benefits. Uh, now, NATO has given itself until 2014. Uh, this means that in that time period, and starting now, uh, some political arrangement must be sought in which other countries that are threatened by terrorism in Afghanistan, of which we are not the principal one, uh, participate in uh, the security functions. To put it bluntly, America is the world's policeman today. China is the world's banker, the world's manufacturer. It has the world's largest population. 
Where would you rather be, America or China? I do not think it's foreordained that the United States continues to decline. In fact, I think America is a basically vital country and is in a position to address many of the problems like uh, uh, the balance of payments problems that have been neglected. Dr. Kissinger, thank you very much. And that was Henry Kissinger um, talking about the uh, fall of America and the rise of China. Um, and Henry Kissinger was um, was he the uh, more, probably the most famous um, oh, Secretary of State um, you know ever. Uh, he is a, for, a foreign policy guru. He is in the Bilderberg, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations. He is like a the big new Brzezinski, I'd say, uh, category. He is. Um, they tried to make him the head of the 9/11 Commission. And the, the victims' families said no, <laughs> because um, his interest with Saudi Arabia and the companies over there, uh, his personal business interest. But um, that's him, you know. Uh, pretty much, I mean, and you can go through the globalists, the elitists, and you can find their writings. You can find their talk, their speeches, their videos. They openly talk about, you know, this stuff. They talk about the fall of America. They talk about how they are building up China. They talk about how they are creating a one world government. Yet, when we talk about what they say, we are crazy. We right. are friends. Right. Now, now I, I got to apologize as well for that audio. Perhaps the audio was just a little bit gamey, uh, if you will. You know, it's a little difficult with Kissinger's accent, which I believe is, is more manufactured than uh, real. And, of course, this is out of a Denmark, I believe it was a Denmark uh, uh, television station. But it gives you an idea, and I think it's important to understand what the game plans are. And uh, with that, as we promised, and we hate to leave people on hold, let's go to the phone lines. We're going to go to, uh, let, me just, let me just double check here. We're going to go to the 856 area code. 856 area code, you're on with Doug and Joe Hagman. Hi, Doug, Joe, it's Sheila. Hey, Sheila. I so, got to say, Henry Kissinger is a dope bag. He's okay. part of the program. Yes. If you bring up Kissinger Prime's Obama for the New World Order, you'll see an article about it. I've oh, seen yeah. that many times. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 He's part of the program. Um, what I wanted to say to you was, I think we need to step back and put some perspective on what's happening with our country here. Um, hey, uh, Sheila, you're cutting out uh, a whole lot. Uh, I don't know if the people in chat. I am. Yeah. yeah. Hang on a minute. I've got a new phone here. How's that? Oh, that's better. So uh, go ahead and okay. what's on your mind. Um, I've been listening to Bible prophecy for a while now. All right. And when we started hearing about the New World Order, in my mind I was thinking it was all Europe. This was all going to be Europe. And the only way the United States fit into it was the North American Union where they're going to bring Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. together, which they're doing. That's right. Um, but that's what I was thinking, and it seemed like, of course, George Bush did his part, too. He just opened the door for Obama to finish off what's going on here. And just the whole thing exploded when Obama took over, and... Uh, that's a good word. Yeah, very descriptive. It expedited, Obama expedited this agenda because he could. And I think if you look at it, I don't believe in coincidences. If you go back to the lineage with Geithner's father and Obama's mother being involved in microfinance in Indonesia, now you got Geithner as the Secretary of the Treasury and Obama in the White House. Not a coincidence. So 
obviously there's a man in the White House willing to advance the agenda of the globalist. There it is. I can't say it any more clearer than that. No, the only the problem is, is we're like a bunch of fish flopping on a beach at this point because <coughs> I didn't expect this, you know. Uh, when I read a lot of the articles, i got to step back because it's all overwhelming because we got so much going on at one okay. time here. And, uh, you know, I saw that article today on Alex Jones' website about the robots. Yes. He had some different video up about that, and it was creepy, the kind of stuff they're wanting to do. It was outright creepy. We're in creepy That's times. That's on the Bible. Yes, yes, it is. yes. Look, we're in creepy well, times. Well... Is there anything else, Sheila, before uh, we cut uh, the news? These dirtbags out, dirt out here that think they're doing something, you know. And this is all going to come back on them at some point. Oh, it, it will? They think they're going to be exempt from the hell that they're trying to bring on other people. It's going to come back on them at some point. As you know, always, Sheila, sorry. you're right. You know, you're right, Sheila. It will come back on and on them and we need to be on the right side of the law uh, the God's law not necessarily man's law and we exactly. need to you know so hang in there Sheila you know it's going to get oh I am it's going to get better I am alright kiddo alright we're, we're going to move along here because we're reaching okay. the top of the hour God bless you thanks for the call let's go to the uh, unknown caller we don't know who this might be but let's let's talk to you this might be boo Go ahead. You're on with Doug and Joe Hagman. Yeah, that's me, Doug, Joe. How's my sound? It's, uh, it's a, little, uh, uh, a little punchy there, but what's what's up? Okay, I apologize. I don't have a headset. I just use a lab tech microphone. Okay, okay. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, uh, Boo. Okay. Uh, in the chat room, he streams our show uh, live on his website. Uh, he is a friend of the show, yeah. and uh, I just wanted to... Well, if you can just, just lower the mic below your mouth <laughs> so you don't get the popping of the peas, you'll be fine. How, how is it if I lower it right there? Better? Ah, yeah, there you go. All right. What's up? Yes, what's on your mind, Blue? Okay, I am very upset about something. I woke up, I was streaming Tom Gamble. He used to have been a former host on Liberty Broadcasting Network. Tom Gamble, and I have a point in this, what I'm trying to say. Tom Gamble claims that he's a watchman on the wall, but if he's the real, he's also a former Marine. He was a former Marine. First of all, he does get a lot of truth out. He does get good information out. A lot of the stuff on his show, he is sharing is true. He has a, a damn good show. I'm not trying to attack him. What I got angry about more than one time, several times, I even had taught my website is onebluraven.com. And a year ago, I tried to let people know, and I was taken as a shill in Liberty Broadcasting Network. By the way, I used to stream Liberty Broadcasting Network. CJ, owner of the station, attacked Steve Quayle and Hawk one year ago to this date. I was... Listeners from coast to coast and worldwide to a very special edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. Today is August 28th, 2012. This is a live broadcast. We have a very special extended program. Our two guests are Mr. Steve Quayle from stevequayle.com and Mr. Greg Evenson, theheartlandusa.com. And folks, bookmark both of their websites. You can get to their websites right now by going to homelandsecurityus.com. Click on uh, the top story there, open it up, 
and you can listen to the program at that location, and you can also access both of these gentlemen's websites. With me in studio is my co-host, Joe Hagman. Joe, welcome to the program. So excited to be here tonight. We had an excellent day today, uh, and this is going to be a fantastic show with Mr. Greg Evenson and Steve Quayle. So much powerful information we're going to get into. I won't take away any more of our That's time. Right. Let's get right now, into now, it. Now, with that, we'd like, to, we'd like to welcome both Mr. Evenson and Mr. Quayle on with the Hagman and Hagman Report. I was on with Steve Quayle earlier on uh, uh, the Alex Jones show. We're going to, I guess, have a uh, encore performance on radio uh, on the Alex Jones show tomorrow. Uh, Steve at uh, noon central and uh, me at one central or something to that effect. Uh, but th- that said, uh, gentlemen, welcome to the Hagman and the Hagman Report, and it is great to have you. Thank you both. Thank Steve. you very much. Steve, yes. uh, look, we've been getting reports all day uh, and throughout the weekend, uh, uh, and of course our story today, thing, you know, it's going hot, it's on basically. The it is uh, whatever the globalists, the New World Order, the Luciferians have planned. What do you, what, what, what's going on here? Well, first well, of all, gentlemen, before I'm, Doug, you, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead, Greg. You talk, and then I'll talk after you. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, look, uh, fellas, if if there was any way to put this other than what we have to say and the way we need to put it tonight, uh, I, I would have much rather uh, had that uh, opportunity, but we don't. We're looking, uh, our nose is to the front door of cataclysm. We have no time left. Uh, This is racing at us at freight train speed, as I've said many times. And so when I consider what uh, uh, Hollywood uh, personality Ellen Barkin uh, said today uh, uh, in response to what's going on in Tampa Bay, she said, wash every pro-life, anti-education, anti-woman, xenophobic, uh, gay bashing, SOB right into the ocean, and uh, I mean, so so she can say this, and yet our veterans uh, can't make a, a, a offhanded comment about the lack of leadership in Washington without being taken in. And tonight, uh, I want to simply uh, thank uh, my uh, dear friend David in Ohio. Uh, who went to the wall to get this information. And I'm, I'm going to call it out tonight, Steve, uh, because I, I don't think we can do anything less. I'm doing this not, not to cause a problem. I'm not doing it just to stir the, the muddy water and, and to have the soup boil over. I'm, I'm saying this because as a former law enforcement officer, state trooper, I, I have uh, been in the crosshairs more times than I can tell you. And for what I have seen coming out, of both Butler County, Ohio, and Miami County, Ohio, uh, I have to ask this. I'm calling the sheriff out. I'm calling the prosecutor out. And the prosecutor in in, uh, Butler County is Michael Noser. It's spelled G-N-O-Z-E-R, but I think it's pronounced Noser. And Miami uh, County uh, prosecutor, uh, Gary uh, Nasal, N-A-S-A-L. I'm calling you out, gentlemen, uh, for your activities, your supervision or lack of it, your knowledge or lack of it, your participation in what has happened in those counties in the last two or three weeks in dealing with uh, uh, veterans in that area uh, to the extent that we can no longer trust law enforcement to act in our best interests. Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones uh, apparently has uh, failed to, to comment on what has taken place in his county. Uh, Butler County Chief Deputy Anthony Dwyer uh, the same thing, Butler County Head Detective, Lieutenant Mike Kraft, and Butler County Head of SWAT, Captain R.A. Greer, uh, strangely silent about what has happened over there in the uh, apprehension of people uh, that have done nothing more than speak their mind, a, a matter of uh, right to uh, free speech, uh, even to the extent that this weekend uh, apparently they were ordered to go into a church service and uh, a, arrest another individual. Uh, I've not yet seen a copy of a warrant uh, published. I've not seen any statements, official or otherwise, from public relations people at the sheriff's office indicating why these actions have been taken. Now, look, uh, you have an oath, and you have an oath to preserve and protect and defend the people of your county in a constitutional manner that apparently is not being upheld by your department. Further, due process, that is, uh, having some 
kind of reasonable suspicion, probable cause, as the legal terms go, or having uh, in your possession prima facie evidence that would say, yes, there is a definite reason why we are taking in this veteran or a series of veterans across the country. The same thing happened in Miami County, Ohio, where County Sheriff uh, Charles Cox and Chief Deputy Dave Duchak and Head Detective Lieutenant Steve Lord and Sergeant Jason Moore, along with their special response team, uh, what's the problem here? What's the problem, Butler County Head of SWAT, Captain Greer? Can any of you people give us any indication at all as to why you are allowing this to happen? This is not supposed to be part of the way that we do business in America. Of course, unless uh, you consider that NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, and the Obama health care plan, which have been both upheld, uh, are opening the doors to this freewheeling, we'll do anything we want, but it's in secret because we don't really know if Department of Homeland Security and Janet Napolitano and the rest of her corrupted, immoral people that are in there running this thing uh, have something to say, or is this simply before Common Pleas Judge uh, Christopher G. in Troy, uh, Ohio, or uh, Common Pleas Judge Robert Lindemann in Troy? Uh, were you involved in this? Was was evidence presented before you so that a warrant was sworn out to be taken, so that these men would be taken into custody? Not in the reports that I'm receiving, gentlemen. We are at the point. There is no difference now between what is happening in these counties in Ohio and other places across the country, where the manifestation of of a a lack of a, a judicial uh, uh, restraint and an overwhelming need to go after after these men, for whatever reason, uh, is is resembling the Soviet bloc. Of course, then the Soviet Union never really did die because they're away, uh, they're alive now in the United States. The same thing that the uh, German secret police did during World War II. Why is this happening? Well, and I'm going to finish up here, fellas, because I don't intend to monopolize the time. But I want to open up by say saying that most recently, you've got now psychiatrists. And I've got copies of the of uh, the intake. Uh, questionnaires that they they give these people, um, and and I have to tell you, even uh, even my mother who suffered a stroke today uh, is lying in a hospital in Appleton, Wisconsin, where the people uh, there uh, have been asking her questions. She's trying to recover, and they've been asking her if she's been smoking marijuana, and other uh, off the wall questions that one of the staff members says it's mandated now by the the president of the hospital and and their board uh, because of insurance and other requirements of an 84-year-old woman that's had a stroke, and but this is the kind of thing they're doing, fellas. We have seen uh, the, the criminalization of being a veteran and called uh, uh, insane or psychotic because they speak their mind, but you see that's part of the program, because they fear. They fear the veteran who has uh, been discharged out of the service recently or even uh, years ago uh, because he might speak out against this kind of nonsense, the very kind of thing that he swore an oath to defend the constitution of this nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and he's finding all of the enemies just up the street in the sheriff's office, or he's finding them in Washington, or he's finding them in the Supreme Court of our country. It is coming to the point, gentlemen, where we will have no choice. They are backing us into a corner from which we cannot come out unless we come out swinging. Wow. Steve. Well, I would like to uh, basically amplify a little bit what Greg has said. What was important in the MIAC report and the original reports coming out from Department of Homeland Security is when this first became public knowledge that the veterans would be vilified, I went on record, Doug, and I'm only setting this record straight for a reason. I stated that the ultimate goal, and I stand by my statement, is the physical destruction of all veterans, not just the imprisonment. Now, do you hear what I'm saying? Because the situations I shared over and over and over that the veterans were identified, they were vilified, they now have been nullified, even in law enforcement, that so many of maybe some of the people that Greg uh, named were in, in uh, the military. What you have now is a total uh, disenfranchising of all veterans. It should tell you something. It should tell you what they fear. I have asked over and over in broadcast after broadcast, 
that the people who can help the veterans financially, get them back on their feet, get them off the streets. The point is, Doug, you and I spoke earlier, my sources tell me, now listen, I can I tell everybody when I make a statement, you take it to the Lord, and you ask the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian or a believer in the living God, if this is true, the bottom line is, is that when uh, John Whitehead came out, the attorney who took Rob's case, and said there were 20,000 veterans in Virginia alone incarcerated against their will on a what I call psycho battle psychiatric evaluation exam. That should have made every single veteran in this country, and, and I'm saying this tonight, you better start writing your congressmen and senators. Now look, I'm saying that for the record. I believe that it is time, and it has come to the time now, where just as Greg mentioned all those names, and I'm going to say something, and I mean this, and I stand by what I say. Any law enforcement officer, any sworn oath-taking law enforcement officer, fireman, or anybody, whether it be an EMT, anybody who's taken the oath to defend the Constitution against, uh, of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, who partakes in the roundup, of any veteran based on shill evidence, based on lying testimony, is guilty of, uh, uh, in, in, I will call it, the assassination accomplice, okay? The bottom line is, is that the just doing your job is horse manure. That is absolutely the Nuremberg denial. It didn't work for the Nazis. It won't work for you. And, Greg, it is my contention, since you've been in law enforcement, that this is part of the plan, the Russian plan, to turn law enforcement against the people from protecting and serving, as it was in your day, to seek and destroy. Now, I want to say one other thing, and I want to share this. Since I was the origin of a man who gave his life to give me this message to warn the people of the red list, the blue list, and the green list, I want to make it clear, the red lists are to be terminated at the initiation of martial law. That means that if you are a gun owner, if you're an outspoken radio talk show host, whatever, it's their desire. Will they succeed? No, and we're going to pray against that tonight. But the bottom line is the blue list, and that's who Greg and I are talking about tonight. Those are you who are saying you're just doing your job. You are to be assassinated. You are to be terminated. And I have enough friends in law enforcement, as well as Greg, that they've already put the shooters, the hitters, the assassins, and many times they're foreigners, into the departments. They've read your complete files. They know where your kids go to school if you have children. They know where your wives work. And the bottom line is after the red list gets whacked, that means assassinated, terminated, destroyed, then the blue list goes. Now, the man who gave me that also gave me the plan that the United Nations had back when Gary gave Matt, that to me, I think almost uh, 15 years ago, Greg, Doug, and Joe. And, and the United Nations, which plays heavily into the disarmament of the U.S. citizenry, is this is all enveloped under a word called curative process. Curative process is a nice uh, kind of a sounding term that basically means we all, those of us who don't tow the United Nations globalist one world order, are considered to be vermin. We're considered to be absolutely fit for nothing except to be destroyed. It's the same thing that Greithwall, that, that Alex Jones interviewed, that uh, penetrated the Weather Underground said in those days, they said they had to kill 25 or 30 million people. These are the mentors ladies and gentlemen, are the people that are now rounding up veterans. And I want to share something. I am trying to follow this up, but in much prayer, I want you to know that with the, with the uh, formula now, Christians are evil, Muslims are good. If you know who's been appointed to the highest offices in the DHS, they certainly don't love Jesus Christ. And the Christians, especially Rob and others and Jason and Don, who have been singled out and arrested, held with no charges, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's because primarily Jason, and I don't know about Don's case, I assume it, but I know uh, Rob's case, these men are standing up for Jesus, and that's what is happening. The persecution, Hawk has said over and over and over that they're going to deliver you up. They're going to put us in jail. They're going to do everything they can do. But this is a call to rise up, men who have worn the badge. This is a call to rise up, men who are currently active duty military. And if you see your brother Marine getting busted for some dumbass, trumped up, 
a, a, a psycho babble charge, then you've got to look at your uniform and you've got to decide what you're going to do when you're ordered to kill your fellow uh, Americans. Listen, I cannot stress, Greg, enough, and I'll be quiet, Doug and Joe, that this is a question of, of state-authorized, sanctioned murder of up to 50 million people with the participation of NATO troops. And the bottom line is I prayed, and people are fasting and praying, that God tonight will literally take, by a supernatural act of his taking off the blinders off everyone's hearts and eyes, that they will see the peril that we are in. The bottom line is we are in un. Uh, charted territory, and the point is is that what we can do is rescue the perishing, but I'm saying to you veterans, be very careful. If any of you are on Facebook, get off it now. If any of you have cell phones, get rid of them now. If any of you are getting hang-ups, don't answer the phone if you can't identify the call. Go and buy a cheapo phone. The bottom line is it is time now. You are being tracked in real time. The plan is there. Your dossiers are given. And, Greg, uh, before the show tonight, Doug and I spoke briefly, and he said, Steve, how many veterans do you believe have been either arrested or murdered? And I said, my guess is, and this is a guess based on what I've been told, is close to 200,000 total. 200,000. These are men who are willing to lay down their life and, and women who are willing to take the oath, and then basically they're given over to the uh, meat grinder. And that I find morally reprehensible, and shame on those of you who voted for the contemporary Gestapo claiming you're Christians. It doesn't matter if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're Latino. What you have got to know is a tree is known by the fruit it bears. We have the most anti-Christian, God-hating group in the White House, and Doug, what you posted today, and I'll turn it over to you now about Rosebud, he said it would make what, Caligula blush? If anybody knows anything about the, uh, 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 if you will, reign of terror of Caligula, probably one of the most profane Roman emperors in the history of the world. And the lasciviousness, the wretchedness, the moral disgust, that's basically what your source told you, is it not, Doug? Steve, that, that's correct, and uh, it, this stems specifically from what uh, uh, Janet Napolitano is doing to the, the people in her inner circle, to the, to the upper echelons of the Department of Homeland Security, and uh, she is uh, uh, essentially, there is a condition that exists right now where people are are being sexually harassed to the point of uh, it's 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 almost a, re- a reverse of what people think. Yeah. If you are straight, for example, you are subjected to harassment by homosexuals. There's a, a an extremely huge homosexual. I will not use the word gay. It, it's a homosexual uh, uh, alliance that has is exists within the Department of Homeland Security. Now, this is what uh, the Department of Homeland Security thinks about the military men and women fighting overseas for our freedoms right now. Uh, according to their own internal reports, the MIAC report, the 2009 DHS report, uh, the return of the military veterans facing significant challenges reintegrating into their communities could lead to the potential emergence of terrorist groups or lone wolf extremists capable of carrying out violent attacks. They also go on to say that they possess the skills uh, and the experience uh, and uh, are attracted to right-wing extremists. This is from the DSA uh, report, and they're concerned that they will use their uh, extre- or their skills to uh, recruit and radicalize veterans into terrorists. Yeah, it, it, you know, uh, Stephen and Greg, they've taken the template that was once used for the Muslim uh, extremists and, and then just uh, inserted veterans in place of Muslim extremists or whatever the flavor of the day was. That's what's happening right now, and um, exactly, you know, and and that's about veterans. But to, but to move on just a, a tad more uh, to advance a little bit more about DHS, uh, Steve and Greg, what's going on right now? What I've been hearing is uh, is uh, this is intentionally opening the uh, uh, DHS to some of the workers, some of the higher profile workers, to sexual blackmail, and this has been planned for quite some time. This didn't happen overnight. Of course not, and what you have as a result uh, is you have the very people 
uh, that are uh, commanding uh, through the, the, the back alleys or straight up uh, with complicit sheriffs uh, across the country, 3,100 sheriffs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you need uh, to call your sheriff, wherever it is, uh, and, and, and now look, now be, be as respectful as, as you can be. Uh, no one's accusing all the sheriffs in the country of being complicit, but you must find out where your sheriff stands on this. You must uh, uh, ask him uh, to state categorically whether or not uh, he is on board with these people who are, are uh, 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 turning uh, uh, veterans into terrorists simply because they say so. Now, I, I want to quickly interject that apparently in Butler County this weekend, uh, deep background source tells me that uh, two, two deputies were ordered to go into a church service and uh, take out a person, uh, bring them out, uh, during, during the time the service was being held, and uh, arrest them uh, on one of these uh, so-called uh, uh, fishing expeditions where no charges are filed, but they're put away for 30 days and uh, then reviewed. Uh, this is Soviet-style stuff. And, and, and to their credit, I wish I had their names because I'd name them too. But uh, they refused to carry out the, the order, according to my deep background source, and uh, they were ordered twice, and they said, we will not do that. Now, that is exactly what I would expect from true men of, of valor and, and who, who are obeying their oath uh, that they would say that to a sheriff or anybody else and then and, and turn around and say, now, you want to make this a public deal? Please do it. I want to go before the county board of commissioners or whatever they call it where you are, and I want to, I want to have this out. I, wanted, I want you to name names. Was it our local prosecutor that was involved in this? Was it our local judge? Or was it somebody up the line, upstream, that's saying uh, from Janet Napolitano's office, oh, what an evil, evil organization that is. Uh, is. Are these the people doing it? And are they telling the psychiatrists what to do? Because now, gentlemen, the psychiatrists claim that sufferers have a recurrent pattern of negativistic, uh, negative that is, defiant, disobedient, and hostile behavior towards authority figures that persist for at least six months, which include, now get this, this is what they're going after these folks on. This is from their own writing. And they say, unwillingness to go along with the crowd, deliberately mm -hmm. annoying others, and testing the limits by ignoring orders. Oh, I got news for you. I do that now. And I got more news for you. I'm going to continue to do it, only it's going to be ratched up about ten times what it was before, because these people must be stopped. This must not go on. Pick at your courthouse. Pick at your sheriff. Uh, do whatever you have to do and find out. Uh, maybe you don't want to do that until you find out whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, because there's a lot of good sheriffs out there. But you need to know, because the sheriff is a local uh, official who takes precedence, not a single federal officer in the United States has authority within a sheriff's county unless that authority is granted by the sheriff. They can be stopped at the county line. They've done that in New Mexico several times with uh, National Forest Service people who are coming in and going to hard time uh, ranchers and Internal Revenue Service agents and other people. Uh, they can do it, you see. They can. And so I don't want to alienate sheriffs here tonight. I'm just saying, gentlemen, if I were near you and I was a law enforcement officer, I would say, so what side do you want, Sheriff? You on the people's side or are you on these maggots that are out here doing what they're doing every day uh, going after veterans? Now, why are they going after the veterans? Well, it's real simple. Because when the U.S. government rolls out martial law, the biggest threat to their total lockdown of America will be the U.S. veteran. Former active duty soldiers are trained in tactical procedures. We all know that. And possess, uh, or pose rather, a real risk because they can easily combat the U.S. military or law enforcement that will show up in every city across the entire nation trying to arrest them because they're utilizing their so-called free speech. I listen to people free speech every day. They say things that I detest, that I cannot stand, that the, the leftists and the communists in the White House and in Congress and all the rest of them are taking us under the waves, and yet we've got to put up with that. We've got to put up with Muslim free speech that threatens Christians and Jews and others. We've got to put up with that because, well, don't you know, that's the only right thing to do, except when it comes to constitutionalists, patriots, Christians. Now, look, I don't hold any more hope that this nation is going to have a big turnaround after tonight's show, Doug and Joe, no matter how hard you're trying, and Steve, but I will tell you this. 
the souls of men and women and children are on the line tonight. And if they don't get the picture once and for all tonight, if never before, that this whole thing hinges on whether or not their faith will be able to uh, transcend what's happening. I'm not talking just about, yeah, I, I go to church every Sunday. No, no, no. I'm talking about getting down on your knees and praying to Jesus Christ uh, to accept you in, into his flock uh, because you have admitted your sin and you have, you have done that in the presence of Almighty God. This is what it's all about. The rest really doesn't matter. It matters, but it doesn't matter anything like your eternal soul. I hope to God, I pray to God, gentlemen, that people listening tonight will get it. Well, uh, I agree with you 100%. I don't think think anyone can't agree with you. We need our local law enforcement, our sheriffs, to be on board, or we need to get them out of their positions of power. Uh, With little time we have left, we don't know. Uh, But they are closing the walls in on us fast. And, um, you know, people need to decide decide which side they're going to be on. And being lukewarm uh, is not going to cut it. That means you are on the side of wrong. You are on the side of evil. You need to take that leap and go all the way. Yeah, I've listened you, to you, gentlemen, over over the the months and 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 so forth, and uh, Steve Quayle for much longer. And I'll tell you, these folks, these are people that have put their lives on the line. Uh, their lives have been in balance at times. They've been threatened. They've been uh, other issues that have come up that I won't speak about tonight because I don't want to give aid and comfort to these evil, no good, Luciferian uh, uh, monsters. Uh, but I will tell you this. It's because we share that common faith, and it is now time. We didn't go out looking for a fight. My father would come back from the grave and and spank my backside if, if I went being a bully. But the bully on the block has come over and over and over and over to our communities, to our churches, to our uh, uh, schools, to our civic centers, to our city council meetings. They've come in in the form of of government agents. They've come in the form of people who've got the brand new latest idea about Agenda 21 and the U.N. implementation of all that nonsense crap. And they've got the gun control now because we just can't uh, uh, survive in 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 a gun culture in this country. Well, we won't survive without the ability to defend ourselves against a tyrannical government, as Jefferson and our founders said. And I will tell you, I feel every day, fellas, that there will come a day in my life, and maybe maybe it'll be in the life to come, but I, if I have that moment to stand before the founders of this nation and others, uh, and especially God, and say, I did what I could, that's nothing to say about Greg. It's just that I believed in those things that make a difference, that give quality to life, to give true meaning to the word freedom that we don't have anymore, but we're so disillusioned and we're so overcome with stupidity that we don't even know we don't have it anymore. And so there's a few of us left that are saying tonight, we're not looking for a fight. The fight has come looking for us. Steve. Well, I think it's important that you understand why the churches were singled out. And God bless those men. And if they hear this broadcast, I salute you. Thank you. I'm surprised, Greg, they weren't told to go in there. And I'm not being a smart aleck when I say this. Arrest them and then yell, Allah Akbar, okay? I'm serious about that. The idea is to destroy even the very foundations of faith. The Bible says, and, 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 and you can't get away from the Scripture, every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God has become so relevant, so charged with the power and the authority of, the, of, of literally the God of heaven, that if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Obviously, the Constitution was, was designed for a moral people. We have become, and they have done their best through public education and the sewer pit of television to destroy the foundations. And I'm calling right now for everybody that's listening to my voice to absolutely Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. To absolutely turn off your mainstream TV for one week. And when you're going to turn it on or you feel like your favorite program's on, go and pray and ask the Lord to show you His uh, view of what's really going on. Ladies and gentlemen, you are being mind controlled and your very will to resist is being stolen from you. Your very ability to resist is being taken from you. And the day will come when that won't be enough. The devils will want your life. The meow men in the machine, thats I could call them something else in the pulpit, <laughs> but I'll call them the meow men in the machine. How dare they enter into the congregation of the Lord? By the way, in the Old Testament, if you're a eunuch, you couldn't go into the presence of God. That was brought out, Greg, in my estimation, 80% of the 
pulpit personalities right now, and I'm not being a smart aleck. What I'm saying is that it is time for let God arise and his enemies be scattered. But when the Lord says he looked for a man to stand in the gap, I am telling you, it is absolutely indicative of the time we live in that everyone has hightailed it, and they're embracing Islam, and they're worshiping the sword sharpeners. They're going to cut their heads off. 17 men uh, beheaded in Afghanistan for dancing, or 17 people. We've got the general who's over charge of Afghanistan stating, I don't know why they want to kill us. Hello, it's fundamental. It's their ideology. You cannot exist in their world as being a Bible-believing Christian and uh, Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and the life. So the church thing was a test. And my guess is, and I'm going to say this, my guess is when push comes to shove, and I pray I'm wrong, I don't think so, 80% of the uh, meow men in the machine are going to turn their own people in just to save their necks and their hides. And that's why, if you want to go to a church, if a guy is a legal pistol-packing preacher, that's probably the guy that's willing to tell you the truth because he's willing to defend the truth. Uh, look, Doug and, and Joe and, and Greg, you know this too, is that the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. That's what's been said. But when we're constantly uh, uh, submitting ourselves to a barrage of lies, and it's not the fact that the current occupant in the White House worships the monkey god Hanuman. He carries a talisman in his pocket. Go look up. All of you want to see what our, our title for the show tonight was based on, H-A-N-U-M-A-N. That's the giant a a monkey, and, 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 and that's who, who is uh, basically portrayed on the talisman. I'm not calling him that. I'm just saying that's the Hindu deity that even the Hindu priest gave to our president, a golden statue of Hanuman after blessing it in a Hindu ceremony. Do you remember that, Greg? I do, and I, I thought, you know, he returned Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill is not necessarily my all-time favorite in history, but he stood at a time when his country needed it. But but he took on this thing instead, and and the the the, the symbolism is not lost on people who are saying, just what does he stand for? What is this government now heading toward at breakneck speed? It is toward total. Uh, uh, d uh, total, complete uh, police state mentality. Uh, there has never been anything like it in, in, in anything in our history that would come close to saying, how is it that millions of people fought, many hundreds of thousands have died over the years defending freedom and trying to keep this nation free. And as Mr. Franklin said, we've, we've hammered a republic. If you, we're giving it to you if you can keep it. Well, we haven't. We've dropped the ball, and and tonight our our servicemen are suffering overseas. Uh, the, the, we've got these homosexual beauties in the Pentagon, in the general staff that uh, can't do anything other than uh, become more incompetent because they're blinded by their sin and their stupidity and their acceptance of such out outrageous principles as homosexuality in the ranks and and we've got all these guys that are highly trained that are saying wait just a minute here this doesn't work this is not going to happen and say well hey it's okay and it's okay where i live and 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 my famous sailing is not in my world blanche i don't work that way and the men that i know that are real men that are called to, to be watchmen and that are called to do what they can to turn this country around and to reinstall the spirit of righteousness in this nation. Uh, those that have failed in the pulpits and those that have failed in the schools and failed everywhere they are, there's, there's just a few of us left that are, that, are, that are screaming from the rooftops tonight, you cannot do this. You cannot continue this, Sheriff. You cannot continue this, State Trooper. You cannot continue this, U.S. Marshal. You cannot continue to do this. And I implore, I beg the men in uniform at, at any level, in law enforcement or the military, I beg you tonight to please re evaluate what you're being told, what you are planning for, what you have been trained for over and over and over. And I've got news for you, ladies and gentlemen, in this country listening tonight and around the world. It's coming. They have set it in motion. It is now past zero hour. It is heading our way. And I don't know what we can do beyond prayer and outright resistance. And I don't claim that lightly, but I'm telling you, we are at that point. Wow. Very, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, and I'm going to on that, too. 
you know, hey, Joe and Doug, what Greg, I, I have to make this clear. Within today, prior to you running your article, Doug, I got a call from a friend of mine, Paul. He got a call from uh, somebody that was uh, privy to a conversation that took place between a DHS guy and another guy in a cornfield in the Midwest with no cell phones present. And basically the gist of it was they're getting ready. This is what the DHS guy told to this other guy who was well-connected. They're getting ready to a collapse the economy, and they're going to do it according to him and the ranger, two separate incidents, apart from Greg, apart from you, Doug. They're looking at the third week in October. Everybody doesn't get the fact that the international global elite, you've already been plundered. That's the idea. The woman who I put the vision up on my website, stevequail.com, and Doug, let me just say this. Since going 24-7, the place to go to my website, uh, stevequale.com, is the Q alert, down kind of midway down in the uh, uh, middle of the right-hand side of the page. That's where I post anything that's coming up. And now I want to read something, Greg, and you're going to appreciate this. Uh, due to your military background, Steve. This is from James. Hey, James, thank you. Bless you. In 1977-78, I was finishing up my BA while in the Army. I did a paper on the Soviet and subject states, such as War Pact, use of state-diagnosed psychiatric disorders to lock up dissidents. So-called oppositional defiance disorder was dreamed up by the KGB, and the American Psychiatric Association at that time scoffed at their diagnosis as politically expedient at the time. The typical victim of this disorder was, as you guessed it, a Christian. I only wish I still had the copy of that paper. I remember you guys personally in 1972 or 73, uh, the year I got saved, or the year right after I got saved in 72, marching on the Russian embassy in D.C. to let the Pentecostal Christians uh, go free. And there was such religious persecution behind the scenes. And, And the psychiatric disorders, the stories of those who have suffered for their faith are overwhelming. But what James is telling me is he wrote his paper. You understand? We have become a communist a controlled and driven country, and your country was stolen out from you, and your bank accounts are going to be stolen out from you. And let me detail the collapse as it's been told to me, okay? For the record, at a point in the very near future, there will be an overwhelming cyber attack on the banks in the United States. Now, this is coming from guys who have pedigrees in the banking world that all the uh, chicken-dropping people, and that's as nice as I know how to say it, can just shut their clucking because they become a bunch of dumb clucks. They have nothing, and I notice I said the word cluck. <laughs> they have nothing positive to answer, and I'm trying to control my tongue. But this is coming from people that trade in the billions a day. That They're big-time players, and they said, at the point, the order is given. There will be a systematic raid on the world's banks, especially the U.S. banks. As banks have a deposit with the Fed, it doesn't matter if the bank has 1,000 accounts or 10,000 accounts. That whole pool of money that's placed with the Fed will be attacked. It will be uh, blamed on a rogue nation or a group of nations. The credit cards will stop. The ATM machines will stop. And uh, at that point, come Monday, if it happens on a Friday, everything shuts down. Now, these are coming from people, information from guys who develop the most computer are the most sophisticated computer monitoring software in the world. This is not from, you know, your local guy that, well, I don't believe that. Well, of course, he doesn't believe anything. That's why he's going to be dumb unto death and perish. But the point is, is that at that single time, then the panic, they're going to initiate the panic. By the way, Greg, some of the sources I've talked to are just amazed that the American people, even the people they've been trained to hate and worried about, have shown so much resistance to engaging them. And, And one guy went so far as to say, crap. We can't do anything more to bait them outside of just kill them where they stand. And my answer to that is it's a supernatural protection of the living God because nobody wants to start this thing. But once they start it, and I want to make it clear, they are going to start it. They will do whatever they have to do, kill whoever they have to kill, 
just to get it going. And once it starts, once the bleeding starts, it will not stop. So this is what I was told is the plan for the international financial collapse. And the question I have asked my sources and, and through other people I have sources, does it concur with the Middle East? Because under the cover of war, gentlemen, that is where the most damage can be inflicted and the most cover can be generated. It would be the equivalent of a, a, a camouflage uh, coup d'etat that is beyond comparison in history. It has been suggested, uh, fellas, that uh, many of the servicemen, it has been suggested, I have not seen any evidence of that, that there will be such a calamity occur that many of the uh, troops committed to Afghanistan may find it very difficult to get back home. Now, you say, no, that's just not possible. It's never happened. Well, a lot of things that are about to happen have never happened. So I, I pray that that is just somebody's bad idea of, of, of a discussion they heard in the halls of the Pentagon. But it, it, I'm not saying that occurred. I'm just saying that this is something being put forth. Why, why else would there be so many foreign troops in this country? Why would they be training day and night? Why would they be training over areas of the country that are extremely rural, that have no, uh, uh, on the surface, strategic value? A theater of operations in this country would not necessarily take place over the Dakotas. But but that's and that's not to uh, speak badly of the Dakotas. It's just that you you've got to go where resources are, where infrastructure is incredibly important, where there are oil refineries and all the the necessary uh, things to wage war, which is just an eternal thing that we keep on doing. Everybody is is uh, uh, you know screaming about uh, well, why are we all in all of these places? Well, look if if the government we're not sending our people to fight wars that go on uh, forever, uh, then we wouldn't have some of these issues. We wouldn't have to deal with them, but they keep sending them. And this is contrary not only to, to the known strategic ability to maintain and defend our own nation, but we cannot continue for 10 or 15 years to continue to extend our troops overseas. The cost is staggering. The, the uh, debilitation of the men's emotional and uh, physical resources is, is known to be uh, something that, that takes years to recover from, and yet they keep doing it. They keep doing it without stop. Fellas, this is an agenda. This is a plan. This is a war that has been instituted upon our people and our, uh, our armed forces from within and without. It is a declaration that has occurred uh, a couple of generations ago that has been kept going by the very people that have been brought up through a, an agnostic, communistic system, and we have them now at every level, in the judiciary, in economics, in corporations, in universities, and in government. We are surrounded by the enemy. They are my enemy. I don't call them anything else. I'll not give them any other respect. They do not deserve it. And because of that, if we don't stand now as a remnant nation and we don't take hold of this and we don't go to our courthouse and we don't go to our state legislatures and say to them, we will not accept anymore. We will not pay taxes. We will not report. We will not do licensing. We will not do anything that you require us to do simply because you're requiring it. Do you want understand the meaning of no. And that is the last peaceful gesture, gentlemen, and I hope that people will do it, and I hope that it will have the desired results, which is for these people to finally get it, that the American people are awake and they're not taken anymore, because the alternative to that is to be backed further into the corner and have to come out with pitchforks in hand. And that will be a very, very bad day for all of us. Indeed it will. And uh, Greg and Steve, I just got this from... Uh, one of our listeners, Sarge, thank you very much. I don't know whether either one of you have heard about this or talked about this. Uh, uh, Marines, uh, civilian police officers conduct urban training exercise. This out of Channel 9, WNCT, North Carolina. Also, at Camp Lejeune, uh, training at Camp Lejeune Thursday uh, ended. Uh, th this is a cooperative training exercise between law enforcement Marines from across the country. They ended their training today. It was a final day of, uh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, yeah, the end of uh, today. Um, 
uh, have you heard about this? Uh, the, the, this uh, and, and perhaps this is just one of many tra- such training exercises. Yeah, there was Black Hawk military helicopters. Uh, they say invading Minneapolis during massive urban training drill. Uh, this is from today as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean, okay, okay, let me ask you. Guys, yeah. Let me ask I've you guys something. Where file. is the disc? Yeah. Where is the disconnect? Now, sorry, I'll shut up, Greg, because, again, I don't mean to talk over you. But where is the disconnect? Urban training, what are they getting ready for? When you've got Blackhawks in Minneapolis, you've got the reports of Spetsnaz landing 600 to 900 men a night at the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport by pilots, by the way, who fly for airlines. When you have all this stuff, does anybody ever stop to think two and two still equals four, even with the new map? It is absolutely in your face, and it's not. I want to make something clear. These are absolute setting up of the command, control, and communication structure within those AOs, area of operations, and the bottom line is this is not just to acclimate the people. This is to insert the troops, both international and domestic, when the go is given, and they will have everything pre-positioned. Greg, is it not correct that the military, uh, they, they basically, they do everything, they do it, they test, they test, they practice, they practice, and they get it down to a science, they integrate all variables, and then when the go is given, they have, in their minds at least, uh, you know, uh, implemented all the variables. The only variable these guys can't deal with is the living God, and that's the king of glory that we're calling upon tonight to, number one, to absolutely rid his people of fear, to empower them with the power of the Holy Spirit, and to give them a, a, a spine of stainless steel and a resolve that will be an embarrassment to all of the meow men and all the appeasers of, of those who want to cut your head off. Boy, I'll tell you what, Greg, there is no more time. This is it. Everything Doug was told today, everything you've been told in the last 72 hours, everything I've been told in the last 72 hours, everybody is basically getting their, uh, you know, uh, how do I say this, uh, fecal contaminant suit uh, ready because the stuff is going to hit the fan. And for the record, hitting the fan, just because you can still go to the bank, still go to McDonald's, and still get milk at $8 a gallon or whatever, the point is that doesn't mean that all this other stuff isn't happening. They have integrated the mindset of the Americans. Do nothing, see nothing, say nothing, and speak up or speak out about nothing. That's why every bit of behavior that is contrary to the destruction of, uh, uh, or forgive me, every bit of behavior that is, is helping them for the destruction of 50 million to 75 million people is acknowledged as good behavior. Anything that would warn any Anybody to flee not only the coming wrath of them, but also warning people that this is there, there's a time period. We're pleading with people to come to Jesus Christ tonight, and we're not scaring anybody. I'm telling you what, if it were not for the Lord, I don't know how I could deal with the amount of information out there. Some of you are trying to deal with the amount of information you get from Doug, from Greg, from me, from Alex, from the other talk radio show hosts around the country, and, and it's overwhelming. The only thing that is the balance is the two famous words, but God and in that day, okay, but God and three letter, or three words in that day. So we're praying tonight, and we will pray later in the show, that tonight is in that day, that God arises in your life, scatters your enemies, and gives you what it's going to take for all of us to go through what we got to go through, and let us be going through it victoriously, not running from the devils with swords, not running from the demons with battles. And we need to understand that the weapons of our warfare obviously have to be as much supernatural as natural. And that's what we're trying to do tonight, everybody, is bring the supernatural war into the context of the literal war that's been declared against you. And to show you, there are no political answers. All you're going to get in a, the political arena is more horse manure and pig crap. And I got news for you. One may not stink as bad as the other, but at the end of the day, you've got two uh, uh, sources of uh, uh, feces you've got to wash off yourself. And this is, I, I don't know how to say it any nicer, Greg. Maybe you can say it nicer. Well, no, I don't Steve, feel like... look, uh, uh, people need to consult Ezekiel 33. What we're doing is, as watchmen, uh, we're saying to you, this is what is happening. We have 
have no interest. We, we don't get ahead. We don't get a bank loan. We don't get a new automobile because we're on the radio. We don't get uh, stipends. We don't get anything. All we do is get lots and lots and lots of grief from people all over the country. And I had a guy walk up to me in a parking lot recently and threaten me. Uh, he was a pro. And he said, you haven't been quiet. We told you to be quiet. And, and I said, well, I'm not going to do that. You see, if, if our founders had done that, we wouldn't have a country. And so I'm not going to do that. And, and, and so I was threatened. I've been threatened a couple of times in the last six weeks. Uh, you know what? I, I said, I'm going to ratchet it up. Now that they're starting to throw threats around, how about taking it up another level or two? Because that's what it's going to take, ladies and gentlemen. If I can't shake you off your chair tonight, and if I can't get you on your knees, then I failed. If I can't get you more aware of what you need to do and understand that we have lost an entire year's worth of corn in this country. We've lost other vegetables that we count on to go to the store to feed our children and to feed ourselves. We've lost it. We're living off what was in the warehouse. When that's gone in the next three to four weeks and the, and the, the yields come in at 20 bushels per acre, where last year it was 220 bushels per acre in the center of Illinois, where my family had a farm for many years. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when beef goes from an average of $3 a pound, uh, like I'm getting some now for my children for Christmas because I said I'm going to give it to you early while you, we can still get it, and it's at 5 6 $7 a pound if you can get it. What are you going to do then? Are you just going to take sit back and say, wow, I'm sure glad that Steve Quayle and Greg Evenson and, and the Hagmans were all wrong. I, I, listen, I don't want to be right. I want to be heard tonight. I want you to listen. We gain nothing by trying to scare you. We gain nothing by just raising the, the hackles on the sheriff in, in Butler County, in Miami County, Ohio, and others. And yet there are good people out there like my precious friend Dave, uh, David in, in Ohio and, and others around the country who are risking uh, their time and their life and limb. And Brushhawk, I know you're listening tonight, and I appreciate what you told us about uh, uh, State Route 73 the other night in uh, north of uh, Middletown, I think, Ohio, and how state troopers in Humvees, it appeared as though, uh, that's what he thought they were, uh, were stopping traffic. For what reason? No accident, no problem. They were just stopping traffic. Why? Because they can. And because they will continue to do that. And they're desensitizing us. Just like I told you at the Olympics, there wasn't going to be any big event. There wasn't going to be no, any nuclear blast. All they wanted to do was show their presence, continue to run us into the ground over present your face so we can put you through some computerized uh, program that uh, uh, immediately identifies you and uh, sets you out from the crowd. You see, we're queuing up in lines. We're doing, yes, sir, okay, I'll, I'll do that. You bet. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not resisting. Uh, please, no, don't shoot me. Uh, don't taser me. You see, we're, we're being done over and over, and these police officers are coming without warrants to pick you up on no charge is worse than the Soviets. At least they had a trumped-up charge. It didn't stand. It wasn't any good. Everybody knew it was bad, but at least they had one. You guys walking in here without a court signed uh, warrant? What are you doing? How dare you do that? You have no right to do that. You must stop immediately. Otherwise, the wrath of the American people at some point is going to be manifest in this country. And when it starts, gentlemen, there will be no stopping it short of complete victory by one side or the other. And I don't want to see that because that will mean the end to our culture and our civilization. Maybe our culture needs to be rearranged, but our civilization is at stake and, and will be occupied by the troops from other nations who will carve this nation up like a big steak. And it will be there will be nothing left of what you have grown up with all these years. It's in your face today. Do you get it? Yeah, you know what, Greg, I, I want to uh, just supplement what you were saying. The uh, tactics being used right now are right from the communist playbook. Uh, Marianne, one of our listeners, sent me uh, some information from the January 2010 edition of the Schizophrenia Bulletin. <laughs> yes, folks, there is such a thing. Authored by Robert Van Voren. It, 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 this was an abstract. In fact, if you go on our website, you can uh, uh, access the uh, abstract. But the bottom line is this. The strategies of communist Russia back in the 70s and 80s, really at the height of the political oppression in the Soviet Union, found that uh, studies found, by the way, that at least one third of the political prisoners were locked up in psychiatric hospitals, that the abuse of psychiatry, in particular as a means of repression, was a favored tactic of socialist oriented regimes. And what are we seeing right now? We're seeing that very same thing. And people were being locked up 
for uh, symptoms of uh, schizophrenia, which included, and, and, and folks listen to this, uh, reform delusions, delusions of being able to reform your own environment. Uh, that's number one. Number two, struggle for the truth. And thirdly, perseverance. These are symptoms, according to the Soviet Union, of a mental disorder. And again, you know, it, it, uh, talk about upside down, backwards, and so convoluted. This is what exactly what we're seeing right now. So uh, I just wanted to input that because I know that, uh, uh, I mean, this is a big thing that's being used right now, and, and uh, thank you for speaking out about that. Well, I think another thing that we've got to do is what Greg just did by mentioning the names of the different officials involved. If any of you are veterans and you've had to go for an evaluation, you need to let people know. You need to broadcast the name of the psychiatrist. Because, listen, let me tell you something. There's no difference that from the guy that cuts your head uh, off and the guy who cuts your heart out or the guy who fries your brain with some form of psychotherapy. There's no difference. Those guys become, and then these are my my words, they become practicing assassins, okay? Now, I'm, I'm serious about what I'm saying. We're seeing this. You know, Greg, one of the things I'm frustrated with, and I, I apologize and I repent of it, but I can't tell you how I beat the drum when Marcus Wolf and Yevgeny Primakov were uh, hired by FEMA then, before Department of Homeland Security, to set up internal controls. For those of you that don't know who Marcus Wolf was, he's the head, or former head, until he passed away, until East Germany, uh, you know, the wall came down, of the Stasi, S-T-A-S-I, one of the most sophisticated spy on everybody. Even the North Koreans couldn't do it as well as Marcus Wolf. The bottom line is, and Primakov made the statement that the Americans spent trillions to fight us, and now they spend millions to hire us. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. And, Greg, I want to recall, uh, Hawk just sent me an email saying about the butler, uh, Colorado, uh, you know, the woman who the deputy said they had nothing on her. Why are we picking her up? If the deputies can't figure out what the arrest is for, and they're saying, why are we picking her up, then they have a moral duty and obligation to say, you put our lives on the line. See, they want an encounter. They want somebody who said enough is enough, and they want it. So then they can say, see, there are all those crazy white people with guns, and all they want to do is shoot, shoot, shoot. And my answer to that is no. It's all the crazy mind controllers under the influence of the Illuminati's mind control program that are being programmed to do that. And the other case, remember, is where there were two deputies who went into the home of somebody to be picked up, and they were heard on the radio saying they were at church church, and when the people returned home, they were not going to like how they left their home, i.e., they trashed it in searching and confiscating firearms. You were the source of that information, and I think that people have got to understand now, there is no, uh, uh, what you say, at all reasonable search and seizure is gone. You can be gone, I can be gone. They have the right to come into my home looking for whatever, and if they come into my home looking for whatever, they can also plant whatever. That's why I never leave my home unattended. I don't. I will have a friend. I will have a neighbor. And, and I'm saying this. This is practical, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a high profile, if you are a vet, they will look if, if, if for any reason – this is what they're doing, and that is actually happening in real time. The next practical thing, dump your regular cell phone. Obviously, I said it earlier, get a pay phone, meaning the throwaway phones are the ones that, you know, you pay once. And then you've got to recognize that you have to. Every veteran listening to me, get off Facebook, Twitter, all of those basically intelligence traps. Get off now. Don't make fanfare. Just don't post. Do not answer your phone because they are voice printing you to, uh, to get your location. And, Greg, maybe a year ago, the, uh, people could say, ah, it's not there yet. We're there now. This is practical advice for now. It is in play now. Am I saying it as clear as I can make it? No, I don't think it could be any more clear, Steve, and I, and I will go one step further to say that uh, when, when you have on a routine basis, and it is now routine across the country, that you have law enforcement officers at any level, at all levels, who feel that they have the um, legal, if you'll put it that way, because even if it were not legal, they're looking at a civil issue. Uh, you break into someone's house without a warrant, 
uh, without the, the Constitutional Bill of Rights protecting you, and they can just come and go as they will, then there is no Constitutional Bill of Rights. There is no Constitution. And it has been made that way because of NDAA, uh, the Obama Health Care, and other executive orders uh, that Mr. Obama uh, delights in signing. It, it, we have had the safeguards removed with a stroke of a pen. We no longer possess freedom. We no longer possess the protection of law. Uh, it is now a, a game that's being played and executed by the very people that we put in charge of making sure that our rights were protected. It is the fox guarding the hen house. And so with that in mind, <coughs> when we do have issues where law enforcement officers, and I know there are some that are doing it, but they do it at great risk. Uh, they'll be ruined. They'll be thrown out. Uh, my son was was the victim of something similar to that, not that same thing, uh, at the sheriff's office in Wisconsin where he was because he kept saying, why are we doing this? Why, why are you doing this? Why are you allowing this to happen? And finally they just said, you know what? You don't like it. There's the door. Wow. And so if you're going.